Our next speaker is Dr. Pramod Chaudhary, who founded Raj Industries in 1983. He developed it into a world-class engineering company specialized in agri-processing. Very good morning. Thank you, Eluquest. And thanks to Dr. Arvind for making my job a little simpler by putting up the entire renewable energy canvas in front of you. Of course, there are a lot of things which I can add now and uh, also assume that it is already the subject is known. The climate change is one of the major topic which is known to all of you. You have been hearing about climate change. Then there's a, also the word called climate disasters. I'm sure you have heard of climate disasters. And the third issue is climate action. So these are the three, one after another, they come in sequence. And I explain or try to share my views about these three phenomena. The other subject is coming on and off is circular economy. Of course, the energy transition which we are discussing. And the one part which is not touched by him was sustainability, which is equally important topic, which is covering all this gamut together. Less than 1.50 degree centigrade, you heard of it. And also net zero, which has become a new buzzword. The climate change is imminent danger for the mankind. And here are some glimpses, which are on the day-to-day -day basis, which are affecting the various geographies, whether it's the floods in Pakistan or it's hurricanes in US, floods in Indonesia, and mega drought in Africa, or wildfires in Portugal and Spain. Now, these are the, some of the happenings which are affecting the humanity, environment, and economy. The disasters are increasing every year. And we have seen that there's a almost doubling after 20 years of gap. It is the deaths, with the risk, and other things. The line below is that is very important, which was published by, I think, Bloomberg recently. $100 billion of insurance claim only because of climate change. And this is something which is increasing day by day, year by year. So there's a SOS call for sustainable actions to control this. Now, there are a number of forums which operate. These are COP27, which is a UNFCC framework. G20 is also attending, addressing this happening in India. And we also saw in Davos, this was discussed very rigorously, what kind of unified approach is required. Net zero, you heard this word, net zero means zero emissions, no addition of carbon dioxide or carbon in the environment. And many countries and companies are declaring net zero game plan. India has declared 2070 as a net zero target, which you want to achieve by 2070. So there's a dire need to control the GHG emissions. What are the solutions to achieve this net zero? Energy transition is the fourth, for, foremost solution. We'll go into detail in a moment to see what it includes. Then there's a circular economy, which is also is important. Carbon capture, Arvind mentioned about carbon capture and forestation. So the combinations in various proportions of these actions can allow, allow us to go to that net zero stage. Umpteen number of reports are available, world energy outlook. So this is connected with energy. Why it is connected with energy? Climate change and energy, they are the same coin both sides. Because energy is creating or consuming the carbon and creating carbon dioxide or carbon footprints, energy technology perspective, and then how do you look at the sustainable future? So these are the some of the things. There are predictions going on, what kind of emissions will take place, CO2 emissions and things. Actually, there's a trend for calculating carbon footprints on day-to-day -day life basis also. When you switch on the life, what is the carbon footprints? When you use the tap water, what is the carbon footprint? And this awareness is slowly coming up in the households that how you can, especially the new generation is very, very conscious of that. And they will definitely be driving this changeover. 
if you see the energy transition at the broad scale, it is the earlier it was forestry which provided the woods for as a fuel, then became coal, and then became the oil and gas. It became important source of energy. This happened in the late 20th century of 2000, and now it is the time for green, green and clean energy. So this is a shift which is happening, and that is the symbol of kind of a energy transition which we are witnessing. So these are the clean and green energy aspects. Solar, which Dr. Arvind referred about. Green hydrogen is coming up. It is becoming more and more possible now. And bio, nuclear, nuclear, somehow it has got a good scope, but it is not taking that kind of attention or that kind of because of the scare it has connected with the, the World War II. And because of that kind of a harm, I think people are not talking much about it, but that's also another great source of energy. Geothermal and tidal are still yet to take the takeoff from the normal course. It is still in the theory. Not much has happened in that front. So subject of my interest is called bioeconomy. Not only biofuels, we consider that as a bioeconomy, and which is becoming very, very important, which is giving the solutions on variety of things. It is giving all inclusive solutions. First thing is, of course, the knowledge base. It involves technology, use of microorganisms. It involves the plant material. It involves the farming community. And it is harmless. That's the most important thing. While achieving the climate change mitigation, it is also helping for a number of parameters. And it's a renewable source. The plant are grow after the first plant is uprooted, the next plant can be planted, and it's a sustainable decarbonization is possible. So in true sense, the sustainable decarbonization can take place in this area. Another strong statement I would like to make is that you heard, you've seen this chart, which I call the sustainable development goals. That's why I use the word sustainable. Sustainable development goals, they have been, UN has prescribed 17 such goals. Bioeconomy addresses more than 11 goals in the same breath. And that is very, very important for all of us, that it is taking care of so many things simultaneously. And you can see that variety of things which are there. We are subjected to fair, steady state, energy security, no fluctuation of oil price, no impact of dollars. Jobs, that's the main important thing. India needs jobs, and this is really offering umpteen scope for job employment. Rural economy can be prospered because of this facility of bioeconomy. What bioeconomy includes? It includes biopharma, bioagri, informatics. The main thing is bioindustrial. So bioindustries cover biomaterials, biofuels, and various microorganisms like Eastern enzyme. It is predicted that bioeconomy will become $300 billion business by end of this decade. It was very small 10 years back, and now it is growing very fast. It has a great potential to grow. We at Praj look bioeconomy on two verticals. One is the mobility, and other is on the chemical and material, what you call as renewable chemicals and materials. And the first part is biomobility is for various kinds of fuels, which can be blended with the fossil fuels. And those are the fuels which can be made from bio roots. So they can help for decarbonization, and we have renewable chemicals and material like plastics, polymers they can be made from bio root. And this can ensure climate action in the end. Both of the things can be. So both verticals are very important to us at Praj. And we have an R&D center where we are meticulously working on these things. In fact, uh, bioplastic is on the way to commercialization. And on this side, variety of fuels are already commercialized. Just, just to show the depiction of what are the 
applications of bioenergy, whether it is the vehicles, whether it is the aircraft. Somebody mentioned about sustainable aviation. I think our first flight will take off in the coming month and that will be blended with biofuels. And airlines are insisting for 50% blending of biofuels with the conventional fossil fuels. So that's offering a very great uh, scope, potential going forward. And we are confident that India can become a hub for use of more and more biofuels in aviation also. Marine is yet to be tested, yet to be tried. Well, marine is equally important, but marine life is in danger because of the carbon or less oxygen because of the use of conventional fossil fuels. So these are various things. And as I say, I'm just repeating what are the benefits here. There is a renewable source of energy, jobs, farmers inclusion. We have got 70%, 80% population is depending on the rural farm community. And I think they will be definitely be roped in for this kind of a economy. We are also working on biohydrogen, bio-based hydrogen, because we feel that that's going to be the solution. Instead of just using the electrolyzing with the water, this could be a, another way where you can have a farming community in the center of the things. I mentioned about Barin. RNG, renewable natural gas. Again, another source of biofuels or bioenergy to be blended with a normal CNG, compressed natural gas, and both can be blended. This beautiful part of the bioenergy is that the infrastructure exists. You don't have to create a new infrastructure, and that's the best part of it. It doesn't have a glamour like electricity or EV, but it can be implemented without much hassles, without much, like you don't require a battery charging station or replacement of batteries or how to dispose of a battery. So these are the few things which are existing and I'm sure the authorities have taken the note of it and now they are really pushing it hard that what more and more bioenergy can be used or bioeconomy can be achieved. In India, we are now rich more than uh, 10 to 15 percent. 25, uh, by 2025, you want to go to 20 percent. 20 percent blending is what has been declared and it can go further. We can go up to 27 percent as a flex fuel cars, it can go up to 85 percent. And the one model which is going to come is called flexible hydro hybrid. Flex fuel with hybrid model. Toyota has launched in India, most suitable for Indian condition. You don't have a separate charging of battery, but it will be online charging of the battery. And the use is very widely thought of in this. Ethanol blending roadmap by 2025 will have 20 percent. And now, just a few days back, the National Hydrogen Mission is declared. So it can be also directed towards hydrogen making from bioenergy. So these are the few things we can really look forward to. And these are the technologies which are within the reach. They can really change the entire thing. I was referring to you the Toyota's flex fuel strong hybrid. It was unveiled in Delhi, and that is really going to help on a variety of things. It can run on the normal IC engine, running on ethanol. It can give you best carbon footprints. And it can also give you the uh, charging of the batteries on the online. So these are the, just at a glance, comparison. E-mobility, IC, IC mobility, IC is internal combustion engine mobility. E is electrical, flex fuel hybrid. And you can see that Almost in flexible hybrid, all the ticks are appearing because they're helping for all the parameters. SAF, sustainable aviation fuels, which is sugars to alcohol, and they can be converted into hydrocarbons. Again, a very safe bet, which is already proven. We are tied up for the technologies, and we are also developing indigenized technology for this. As I say that. Uh, we have also made a joint venture along with Indian Oil to ensure the supply of this SAF on a regular basis. By E20, by 2025 and beyond what? That's the question many of you come to your mind. So we say that is the possibility of flex fuel cars up to 85%, there's 100% ethanol also is possible. So all those options are there in front of us. And I'm sure that they'll be 
put to use one by one. The main concept is happening is change from oil refinery to bio refinery. And this is a, before that, this is a small picture of biochemicals. We are in the early stage of that. Biochemicals, renewable chemicals, as I say, renewable plastics. Various tires, for example, biobutadiene is possible, or different processes are there. If you happen to come to Pune, please do visit our R&D center, and we would like to take you around to show what kind of work is happening there. This is a biorefinery versus oil refinery, and we can see that all those fractions of a crude oil, similarly, you can get similar fraction in the crude bio raw materials. You also, in addition to that, you get biofertilizers, you get bitumen for road, road construction. So all these things are feasible from the... In short, it is giving you economical, societal, and ecological progress on all the fronts. This is very, very important. This is the country's first, second generation ethanol plant based on the biomass. It's the agri-waste which is converted into ethanol. It is near Panipat and it is just uh, under commissioning and we hope that we'll be able to showcase this in near future. This looks like any other oil refinery kind of a thing, but this is very crucial because this is a homegrown technology being launched or it's already launched in Punjab or Haryana. We are building such three plants. This is Panipat and there are two more plants coming up in Punjab and Orissa. One for Hindustan Petrol. So all the three oil companies, oil marketing companies are constructing this plant based on our technology. We are just providing the equipment and engineering designs and I think they will be up and running one after another in coming years. This will also get indirectly addressed the food versus fuel debate. Many times the biofuels or ethanol is considered as a, a food versus fuel debate, it is a negative mark. But no, this is from the waste. Waste which is otherwise people have to burn it and you, you are not, but maybe people from Delhi, they vouch for it that it is causing them a lot of problem in the winter months and that's where this will come handy. Honorable Prime Minister has declared this is Amrut Kal and I think this Amrut Kal is really a period for green growth. And there are various items which are being addressed. The last statement is very, very critical. It has just come three days back from McKinsey that green business has got a potential of 9 to 12 trillion dollars per year before we reach the net zero. And this is a reality which will cover a variety of processes, options, and countries. This is just on 13 March, McKinsey published this document. And that also includes the green business, clean business, both for fuels and materials. Friends, thank you very much. And I hope you enjoy. And you'll also start following some green measures in your day-to-day -day life. Thank you very much. I thank Quest for their this opportunity. Thank you very much for the uh, illuminating presentation, sir. We have a couple of questions. So the first thing is that ultimately biofuels are combustion-based uh, and are therefore subject to thermodynamic efficiency limits. So in the broad scheme of things, maybe not in the immediate future, but going forward, where do you expect biofuels particularly to go? And uh, the emissions from methane also connected with the sector perhaps? See, uh, biofuels, we consider they are the part of a circular economy. Indeed. Because whatever the carbon dioxide is produced during the combustion, it gets absorbed by the plants. Correct. And those plants are used to produce biofuels. So it's a closed loop cycle. Indeed. Yeah. And that's the basic belief on which these are totally worked out. Where do we see this going forward? Because uh, direct electrification is somewhere more efficient than combustion. So is this a transition or no, is it? No, no, no. I think it is a destination. And like okay. that's why SAF is a classic example. In sustainable aviation fuel, biofuels have been found to be most suitable. 50% blending of biofuels is envisaged 
by two zero three zero no two zero three zero or something like that. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. And Indian government also is following. Worldwide is being followed. Indeed, sir. And just one more question, sir. Yes, sir. Since we brought up the topic of blending, uh, can you shed some light to a uh, how is it to blend with petrol versus diesel versus aviation kerosene? Because the blending limits in each is different, and then phase separation. Problems. Very, very good question. I must uh, compliment you for this. This Thank you. blending of biofuel or ethanol with petrol is a flash blending. Absolutely flash. Nothing else is required. In case of diesel, it is not yet popular, but not yet. Uh, we are trying to develop a binder, what you call it, an emulsifier which will allow both specific gravities are different. So they can't directly blend. So we'll try to build a binder and uh, that's under development just now. That will give the proper blending. So these are the basic principles of blending of this. Yeah, I don't know whether I answer your question. Indeed, sir. Thank you for an illuminating talk.